This is day 45, episode 26 of my modular journey. And today we're going to be talking about XOR Electronics NerdSec, a hybrid tracker sequencer. It has 256 rows of eight tracks of sequences. And then each one of these little, little dashes in here is, is a pattern. And inside that pattern are 60, up to 64 steps. And then each step can have CV for pitch, gate, envelope, modulation, and four effects. And it can have something called a table. And it can have something called a patch. It's pretty intense. This gets really, really deep. And I'm not going to go that deep into explaining what all this stuff does because partly I don't know what it all does. But I do want to show at least what I'm talking about here. So let's take the, uh, let's take the tr uh, track one, row zero. I'm just going to hit the OK button here and I'm going to create a pattern. And now I'm going to hit the pattern button, which is right here. And now you can see there are four pages of 16 steps. So that's, that's 64 steps. And this is the note data here. So if you wanted to play a note, C4, for instance, then if you came here, this is actually the thing called a patch. So if you hit OK on there to create a patch, then you can click, hit over here on the patch button and get into here. Here is just a load of settings for, again, for all of these parameters inside of a patch, inside of a single step, inside of a single pattern, inside of a single track or row of a track. So you can see where I'm getting. There's a lot of configuration to, to get into here. Uh, the next thing over is something called tables. And I haven't played with these yet, but I've seen a few demos on them. So again, you press the OK button to create a table, and then you can push the table button over here one of the examples I saw with using tables was like setting up ratchets, which I don't know too much about because I'm not an EDM guy, but I think that's when the when the, the sound stutters really quick. Or uh, chords, maybe you want to set up chords, triads, or, or something like that. So you could use tables to set up the allowed notes, what scale it's in, all kinds of stuff that, again, I'm, I haven't gotten too deep into all of these things. That is a table also inside of a pattern. So then the next column, uh, I believe, is trigger trigger modes, like different ways to set up the triggers. So as you're holding shift and hitting the arrows, you can see the, the, the type of the trigger setting is changing, whether it be a gate here, delayed gate, uh, trigger, five milliseconds, and so forth. Then there's also modulations. So I, I believe that is where it tells it what, what to modulate, like how, what to send out of the mod jack. Uh, and, and effects are kind of interesting because it's not like digital delay effects or whatever. I believe it's just how you want to affect the, the, this one note being played. Like you can alter its pitch, for instance. Uh, if you go through another one, there's there's the glide. You can set glide CV and then how many steps it glides. And uh, of course, then if you don't want any of this stuff, it's shift delete to cl clean up your mess. So that is that is what a pattern looks like. Then I come back out to sequence, and now you again you have that's one pattern on the first track row zero, and you can go down here. Let me just do this. So I'm on zero. If I hit page down, you can see where we're going to go all the way down to FE, which is 256. And that's hexadecimal. So you have to be a little bit of a nerd to use NerdSec. So one more thing I want to cover is the setup menu or the, the project and the setup menu. So if I can click on the project, uh, you can see in here uh, like places to set your tempo, load or save your previously saved sequences. Um, an interesting thing that I skipped right over that I'm going to cover now is if you wanted to load samples, you could load samples. There are 12 slots for samples, and by just drilling down here, you can see these are actually WAV files on the, the, the SD card that you see sticking out here. So you put these little, uh, these little files on here, and you can actually load them into a slot on, on NerdSec. 
And then when you then back up here in the tracker, tracks seven, let's open, let's make a pattern there and go into the pattern. Now you can actually load one of those, you basically play back. You're going to trigger it to play here. But the other good thing about this is this is, uh, this is sample seven, like track seven, but there are two samples. See, if you keep hitting the right button, now you wind up on the second one. So not only do you have track seven and eight with, with a audio sample, but now you could do seven with two audio samples and eight with two audio samples. So you could basically do your kick snare on one, and then you, on the other, on channel eight, you could do, or track eight, you could do uh, hi-hat and claps or something like that. You could basically stack things up that way. And uh, and this is just very similar to my, my old school ways of doing things. And so I really, really love it. So that is why I picked NerdSec, at least as my first sequencer. Uh, the, the particular one that I purchased was a, uh, was a bundle. So NerdSec also came with the uh, the expander the I/O expander you can see that here the I, the I/O expander and um, uh, an add-on module more CVs or 16 CVs at, to add to NerdSec so it sits right next to it like this and and adds more more outputs to it and then of course the uh, more triggers for how I'm going to use it I'm going to use it as a sequencer of course. Uh, I will use it to send CV to my to my oscillators. I will send gates to my oscillators. I will send uh, modulation. That's kind of a, a quick overview of how I plan to use it. So to show you what some of this uh, some of this stuff looks like in practice, let me just load one of my songs that I was working on, a song called Pipeline. So you can see here, here's all five of my six tracks with, with some patterns in them. If I come over here to channel seven and I click the pattern button, you can see there's a C4 with a velocity of FE, which is full. If I keep scrolling over, now there is another channel here, seven slash two. So it's the second, second audio file of channel seven. The sample to be played is the TR-808 snare. All right. So you can put, press the OK button here to get us hear it. So you're basically triggering the sound to play. If you come over here and you do the shift right arrow, see it moves to the next instrument or the next sample which is a snare. And then the last one is O2, hi-hat, closed hi-hat. It tells you down here which sample you picked when you pick it. And then this is the vo volume or velocity of, so you can do, you could do accents by making some of the, some of the hi-hats, for instance, strike harder or be louder. Also in here is again, the effects which I have for one of my effects, I have break. So all that really means is loop. So it's all it's doing is playing the one kick, the one snare, the one kick, the one snare back and forth. So let's go back here and switch over to the channel eight. So I'm gonna go into that guy. And here you have quarter note, quarter note hi-hats, right? So this one, if we play it, simple. So that's kind of how I have my, my drum stuff set up on my seven and eight. But then over here in the, in the, in the one through six is where uh, the instruments actually are. And let me go into one of these guys. So I'm gonna go into pattern and you can see there's notes that are assigned. And in order to get them to play, I have to go to uh, track one is going to this row one here. So I have to take a CV and a gate out of here to my instrument, which in this case is plates. So taking track one, row one, pattern zero, I'm going to click on the pattern button here and I'm going to come in here to, to where you see my notes. I've already wired up the CV one and gate one 
or trigger one as they call it, but it's basically CV1 and gate one to volt per octave and level. And then my outs come to my mixer. Right now everything's gonna sound pretty bland because there's no effects or anything plugged into it. But then if you hi highlight the note, So you can hear that it's plucking away, and that's how you kind of program to get what you want. Um, but it sounds something like this. So that's uh, that's kind of what uh, instrument one sounds like. So to uh, plug all this in is gonna take a long time, so let me do that and I'll come right back. All right, so I went away and did a bunch of wiring. I think this is gonna turn into my very first patch from scratch video, which is the next series I hope to be motivated to, to film and edit and post. Oh my goodness, maybe I should just make music. So a quick rundown of what happened while we were offline is I basically took uh, channel one or track one out of NerdSec goes to plates right here. Track two I'm not using. Track three is a simple repeating uh, kind of guitar plucky patch that's going into rings. Track four is the, a bass, so it's a bass riff. It kind of actually sets the chords of the, of the whole song, since everybody else is kind of just repeating. So the entire melody of the song is being done by the, by the bass tone here, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and then um, channel five here, or track five, just, uh, just inspires and ensemble to to play a, a, a D5. So now to to start a sequence, of course, you highlight the the row that you want to start on, and you would hold the shift button and press start to play the whole row, or just start to play just the note the pattern you're on. So without any further babbling, pipeline. This wraps up episode 26 for the XOR Electronics NerdSec Hybrid Tracker Sequencer. Coming up next, the Erica Synth Pico DSP, which did a fine job in this episode. Stay tuned for that.